Hello and welcome to today's 20 minutes of yoga. Um, we will start out standing up with our feet hip width distance apart. And by hip width, I mean where your hip sockets, where your hip, where your thigh bones come right out of your hip sockets so that your ankles are right below your knees, below your hips, around about. And feel into that steady state. And then on your inhale, we'll just raise our arms up on the inhale and then wait until the exhale and then lower down with your exhale. So let your breath lead. Um, as you start to inhale, let your arms float up with the inhale and then wait for the exhale and then lower down with the exhale. Just keep going on your own with your own breath. And at the start of this sequence is when we can set our intention. And my intention today, I'll be focused on resilience and knowing that resilience is knowing that we can overcome obstacles. There will always be obstacles, so resilience helps by letting us know that there are things that we can do to overcome those obstacles. Now on your next inhale up, um, leave your hands up and then clasp your right, right wrist with your left hand, root down in your right foot, and then bend gently to the left. As you inhale, soften a bit, and as you exhale, shine a bit more into your stretch. Inhale, back up to center, switch your hands, root down into the left foot, then bend to the right. Inhale back up to center, let your arms float down, and then we'll head back to a wall. And at the wall, Take your hands and put them out onto the wall a little bit wider than shoulder width distance. Then you can walk back as far as you can walk as you walk your hands down the wall until you feel a gentle stretching at the back of your legs, the backs of your thighs. So once you feel a gentle stretch, backs of your thighs, then stay where you are, pressing into the wall and breathing. And send your breath to the backs of your thighs. Now walk your hands back up the wall as you walk toward the wall. Come on up. Come back to your mat. Raise your arms up overhead and with your feet still hip width distance apart. Arms up and then sit back as if you're sitting into a chair. And arms up straight overhead and then just sit back. If you're sitting into a chair, it can feel nice to pulse with the breath up and down or to use a soft block between your legs um, for steadiness.
On your next inhale, straighten up and then softly, gently forward fold. You can bend your knees as much as you need to to get your fingers on the ground. Pedal your knees back and forth. Stretch out your legs a bit. And then plant your hands on the ground and come on down to hands and knees. And if you have cranky knees, then I recommend having a folded up blanket underneath the knees. And if you have cranky wrists, you can do the same or fold up your, um, your mat to give a bit of support onto the wrist portion. And if this is entirely cranky for you, you can certainly do cat-cow in a chair by holding onto your knees, coming forward and back. So we are coming to hands and knees, tabletop, for a, bit of, a few rounds of cat-cow. So on your inhale, you can look forward and drop your back like a cow. And then on the exhale, arch your back like a cat. Inhale forward like a cow and arch your back like a cat. And keep going with your own pace, with your own breath. This pose cat cow, this serves to wake up our spines in a very gentle way. Increasing mobility and flexibility. All around. Now, set your mat back to normal and want to step your right foot forward and keep your left knee back <clears throat> and come forward. You can use blocks on either side um, if that helps. I know it helps me on either side of your front foot. And come forward, but you don't need blocks. You can just use your fingertips as well. Come forward with your fingertips on either side of your front foot and <clears throat> stretch out that left hip flexor as you're coming forward. And soften. Now walk your hands back to straighten your front leg, the front right leg. And again, blocks can help here as well to have you, help you to be more upright. And then once you're upright, square and center, your hips are even with the short end of the mat. And then you can gently come forward, come forward until you feel the tug on the back of your leg and then breathe wherever you are is fine. Now switch knees, bring your right knee back down and bring your right left foot up between your hands. And bring your hands forward on the mat to frame your front foot. And stretch forward. Stretching our right hip flexor this time.
Now walk your hands back so that your left leg straightens out. Come on up. Square your hips, ensure they're still straight, even to the to the front of wherever you're headed. And then come on up and then hinge forward a bit until you feel a tug. I feel a tug pretty darn fast. And whenever you feel the tug, just breathe into that space and feel if you can go just a little bit further. Again, we don't ever want to feel pain. And if, you're, if your starting place is right here, then stay upright. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Only go to where, it, just respect your body's limits. So I'm going to say. Okay, so now that we have, oh, bring your knees back and we will come on down onto the mat to set up for bridge pose. So for bridge pose, just gonna lie flat down on our backs, bring your feet right up to your hips. Um, so your feet are right behind your butt. And your hands can go down, they can, they can, your hands are down near your feet. Now bend your arms and put your hands up and spread your fingers out wide. As you press your elbows down, scoot your shoulders onto your back a bit more. Now take a big inhale and with your exhale, lift your hips. So inhale, exhale, lifting the hips up high. Press your head down into the mat to raise your hips a little bit higher and scoot your shoulders a little bit more onto your, onto your back. And if you can reach your hands underneath, you can come in for a bind, hold your hands, or you can use a strap to bring your hands together underneath you. And just press your arms into the mat as you raise up a little bit higher. And release your hands and bring your butt down first. Reach for the mat with your butt and then flatten down oh, your whole back. Flatten your spine down onto the mat. And rest. Okay, knees up, feet right be below your hips. Bend your elbows, press your elbows into the ground as you scoot your shoulders onto your back. And then press your head in as you head down to the mat as you lift your hips up high. Lift your hips up as high as you can. Keep pressing down with your head to keep the curve in your neck. And gently come down. This time you can come down one vertebra at a time. Just curl down your spine. One vertebra at a time. Until your sacrum hits. Rawr. Okay, and now that we're down on the mat, lie down flat. Ah. And again, lift your hips 
your knees up. Knees and legs up so that your shins are parallel to the mat on the ground. Spread your arms out wide into a T. On your exhale, bring your knees over to the right and inhale back up. And exhale over to the left and then inhale back up. And go with your own breath. Exhale over and inhale up. Exhale over. And inhale back up. Go with your own breath at your own pace. On your next exhale, leave your legs on the side that they're on. And melt to the floor. And if your knees aren't all the way reaching to the floor, you can put a bolster, a block, a book, anything to raise the floor a bit for you. And on your next inhale, raise knees up to center. Straighten out a bit so that you're fully centered and then let your knees fall to the other side and stay on that side for a bit. And soften into the ground. Raise your knees back up to center and come on up to sitting, up to sitting with your, your legs straight out in front of you and lean back a bit until you feel your abs engage and then lift your knees and have your arms out wide, palms upward. And then raise your feet up off the mat for a low boat. And you can stay here if you like, or you can straighten your legs out to a full boat. And then gently, softly, slowly lower down as slowly as you can, letting your toes and your head be the last, not your heels and your head, be the last thing to touch the ground. And now we're down. This is our final resting pose, Shavasana. So relax, have a quick drink of water if you'd like. Just relax. We'll just have another moment here. You can think back, think back to your intention for this practice. Mine was resilience because the re resilience is knowing that we can overcome obstacles. As you're resting in Shavasana and thoughts are coming up, just acknowledge your thoughts, acknowledge they exist, and let them continue to move on, allowing for other thoughts to come up. Gently welcoming the day.
And gently start wiggling your fingers and toes. Wrists and ankles. Raise your arms up overhead and stretch out long, as long as you possibly can. Sweep your arms around and bring your knees up to your chest and rock from side to side, side to side. And then release one arm overhead and roll in that direction. And rest your head and your bicep on that side. With your eyes still closed, Press into the ground with your hands. Push yourself up to a comfortable seat. Press your hands together at your heart. Bend your head, chin to your chest. And thank yourself for taking this time to practice your yoga. The light in me celebrates the light in you. Namaste.